It's all right, girl. <laughs>
passing through here like you own the place. But the O'Driscoll's got the guys on it. Yeah. Morning, friend. Must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. Just walk away, you nosy idiot. Oh, Mr. Downs! do you want? <coughs> now, 
Now, I don't know what the meaning of barging in here is, but... Oh, come here, you maggot. Please, sir. I'm... I'll... Really? Threaten me, would you? Oh, please. I have a family, sir. Please. I don't care about your family. You owe me money. Why'd it have to come uh, to this, huh? Ah. Believe me, sir. I didn't want this either. This is not forgiveness of my debt. This is just a stay. You ain't such a do-gooder, are you? If you're running out on debts... I'm... I'm not running anywhere. I'm... I'm... I'm, do, I'm doing my best for you. How's that debt looking now? You borrowed money from my business partner, Herr Strauss. You owe him, you took the money. He wants it back, what's not to understand? <laughs> Where's our money? I don't have it. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> then sell your wife, or your family, or something. We ain't your idea of <laughs> charity. Is that clear? <laughs> What are you looking at? Thomas! I said what you looking at, woman? My husband isn't well. If we could just have more... Like I said, we ain't nobody's idea of charity. Get us the money. Ah, how did you get on? Not so good. He's almost dead. And they seem more or less destitute. You were a fool for lending them the money. Well, people who aren't desperate don't seem so interested in my propositions. Of course. Miss Grimshaw. One of the girls saw that friend of yours, Mary Gillis, sniffing about. Mary? Yes. I never liked that woman, Mr. Morgan. Funny business. Hey, if you could give me some leather working tools. I can make some rugs and blankets okay, and the like out of these hides you're Dandy, bringing in. Dandy, how are you? Okay. Well, hey, Maybe we may. Killed me yet, so. I'll keep my Who eye out for some good material. Yeah, so. They're good boys, mostly. No more desperate, Strauss. 
It's in Odetta's nature. Less desperate, then. Hi, Uncle Arthur. How are you, Jack? Are you was sick? A little bit, but Uncle Hosea gave me some medicine. Okay, good. Howdy do, Arthur. <laughs> I went to all city for her and all, while all my world traveling and roaming around. I spied a fair maiden so lovely. Gently on her I did say, she pulled up her garment. So scared it would soil. I out with old Phoenix went pouring for oil. I hadn't been boring six inches or more. The oil from my auger so freely did pour. She wiggled her ass, looked up and smiled, said, Bear down on your auger, for I know you struck oil. Things went on and on for a week or ten days. My auger machinery got to fire in some ways. Dear Arthur, I've written this letter a hundred times or more and I cannot get it right. It's me. You know it's me from the bad handwriting. I know I said when we last spoke, and I was going off to get married, that we would not speak again. I know I said a lot of things, and I meant them, I suppose, at the time. But I'm not so proud as to not speak to people who care for me, or cared for me. I've been in Valentine for a couple of months. I had some bad luck, and... You got there, lady. Don't talk to me, Arthur. My lady. Howdy. Hi there, Arthur. There he is. What, Arthur? How you feel? A little better. Mr. Arthur. I told Dutch, I feel I should tell you. I saw some of Combs boys riding around. Down here? What they want? I have no idea. They see you? I don't think so. Okay. Well, thanks for letting me know, Karen. Mm-hmm. Okay, speak later. Good, take care. Arthur. Easy, 
girl, you're okay. Let's go, girl. Arthur, stop pretending to look busy and sit down. Yeah, you got that down to a fine art. Yeah. You're all right, girl. Hey, you're okay, girl. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to disturb you, ma'am. Is Mrs. Linton in? I'll go see. Mrs. Linton? A collar for you. Hello, Arthur. I heard you and your friends was around. I... Okay. Where's, um... Where's what's-his-name? Died. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Happened a while ago. 
Pneumonia. Bad business. Sure. So, uh, well, you've been, <clears throat> you've been made a widow and you come here looking for me, is that it? No, ain't like that, Arthur. Ah, okay. Listen, Arthur, I, I'm, uh, my family, I need your help. You mean the family that always looked down on me? You want me to help? It's my little brother, Jamie. <laughs> I always liked Jamie, at least compared to the rest of them. <laughs> He's broken Daddy's heart. Daddy has a heart. Don't make me beg you, Arthur. My money, my life, me. I wasn't good enough. I'm sorry. We need your help real bad. Little Jamie's joined the Chelonians, that strange religious order. Good for him. They're quite mad, Arthur. They'll kill him. You're the only person he'd listen to. So, I'm too rough to marry into your family, but it's okay to ask me to help in saving your family. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to help me, but, but I think of you often. A long time ago now. I'm begging you, Arthur. I say let Jamie live Jamie's life and not the nightmare that his daddy dreamed up for him. Jamie's so innocent, Arthur. Please, Arthur. Will you help me? Where is it? Somewhere out near Carmody Dell, I think. The rancher there said he'd seen him around the Cumberland Forest. I just want him back. Arthur, if you find him, bring him to me at the station. I'll see what I can do. I'll owe you. You already owe me. <laughs>